everyone. Welcome to another episode of Customer Success Talks, Real Challenges Experts Advice. Today's episode is not going to be different as each episode that you have been listening. This is going to be another amazing episode with two great guests and a really interesting topic as well. But before we start things off, I want to thank you for the support that you have been giving to this podcast, to Nav and myself, who Nav is not here with us today, unfortunately. He's taking some good vacations, but we are both really happy and thankful for your support through this journey. Um, and yeah, so today's episode is patient and progress, the pillars of customer success careers. We're going to focus on these two essential pillars, not only in your career growth, but also I will say in your personal life as well. Sometimes it can even affect that. And this is going to aim not only people transitioning to customer success where the market is really complicated to find a job right now, but also those who want to go, uh, who want to go one step higher in the ladder and want to maybe become a customer success leader. Why not? And for that, you need patience, progress, you need time, and you need a lot of effort. And for that, we have two amazing guests. Now, um, let's go ahead and introduce our first guest, uh, guest of, the, of the day, which is Noah Little, who you, I'm pretty sure you have seen in LinkedIn with those amazing posts and always helping people. Noah has held positions such as senior account manager, customer success manager, um, lead of customer success as well. Isn't that amazing? In addition, uh, Noah also coached customer success professionals to help them break into customer success. He also has a YouTube channel called The Secrets of Customer Success. I love that name, Noah. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's an honor, actually, to have you here. And we also have a second guest. And uh, Katrina is not new in uh, customer success talks. She has been here in another episode with uh, Carly Agar as well. But if you haven't heard, if you haven't gone through that episode, let me go ahead and introduce Katrina to you guys. Um, she started her journey in customer success. Actually, in I uh, know actually she started her journey in real estate in Philadelphia before moving to Berlin in March of 2023. Um, where she created really nice, amazing, I will say, customer success meetups through CS Connect. Uh, I know you have heard CX Connect, and I will always recommend you to go and subscribe to their uh, to that community. You will see in the About section the link. Um, Katrina has over seven years of building strong customer rela relationships and also improving onboarding proce uh, processes and also being a trusted advisor for your customers, which is our, our goal as well. She also contributes to the CS Insider's bi-weekly newsletter. Katrina, thank you so much for being here with us again, and i um, happy to see you. Thanks for having me again. Amazing. Love this. Love being here with both of you, where, where you both have um, the same passion for customer success, the same passion for helping um, professionals, but also with two different perspectives of today's topic, which is also really interesting. And to start things off, we're going to talk about networking as an icebreaker. But I do want to highlight the following. This episode is not about who is right or who is wrong. It's about hearing both perspectives. So that's why it's going to be really interesting. And then you here in the episode will take the decision to say, well, I want to go more towards this side to the other one, or I just want to take this tool and use it on my favor. And the first um, question is about networking, right? So I want to start things off by, mm, Noah, you said, you said that you help people get customer success jobs without networking. Um, your free training is called actually land a customer success job in 2023 without networking. Um, can I know your opinion about networking? Definitely. So, you know, the premise is basically people don't have time to get lucky with networking. And my own personal example is I've looked for jobs twice, once for four months, once for six months. And it just came down to grit, effort. And that's really what it led to me getting success in landing a job. And I apply the same mentality to everybody I work with. 56 people have already secured a job with me. Not one of them has networked. 
because to me, it is a long-term game for networking. Unfortunately, I think there is the idea that you can network, you can find a job really quickly, but from what I've seen, it's not going to work out that way. We know the market in 2024 is super competitive. Super. You have bills to pay. you got a mortgage to pay. You're better off applying for jobs until your hands bleed to secure an actual role because people don't have time to wait. And that's why I see my access. That's why I see clients being successful that way. And when I tell people, hey, you got to apply for 500 jobs, they're pretty shocked. Um, but that's what leads to success. So that's how I view this. Wow, that's so interesting. Applying to you, your hands bleed. Interesting analogy. Uh, Katrina, what is your, what do you think about networking? Um, so for me, I think I understand what Noah is saying. It is, it is the long game, um, ultimately, and it does take time and it's not everybody's cup of tea. And I think you have to decide for yourself what makes sense for you, um, if it, with your personality, with your time, um, what, um, you're good at. And so, for example, if you are good at um, networking or you'd like to become better at networking, there's certainly um, ways of doing that that don't require much, you know, you don't necessarily have to leave your house, but you can use LinkedIn and leverage that, whether it's through comments or through LinkedIn posts. You can, you know, join webinars. If you decide you want to, you know, go outside and, and maybe do a meetup or some sort of in-person event, Mm -hmm. um, that also works. And my perspective is that, um, people like to hire people that they like, and a lot goes when you meet somebody and you, you know, you have a chemistry with them and you can bond with them and you can talk and you can see, you know, kind of how they think or they feel. So you're really, you know, exposing who you are and it's not just the, the, um, piece of paper of your resume, but mm -hmm. somebody has a, a, a feel for you. And um, I think that that can make a difference for sure. Yeah. Katrina, are you more into applying to a lot of roles or are you more selective when you are applying? Um, for me, I was more selective. Um, I wanted to apply to roles that I was really, really interested in and didn't want to um, spend time on roles that maybe I would want, maybe I wouldn't want. It did, for me, it didn't make sense. And also coming from the States over to a new country, things are a little bit, it's a little bit of a different game for a lot of reasons, whether it's social reasons or cultural reasons. So, you, you know, I kind of needed to figure all of that out as well while maintaining, um, you know, the connections that I had in the U.S. as, as well. But I wasn't really sure where I was going to land with all of that. <laughs> Definitely been there. I'm still there and it is a different, it's a different, you play with different rules. Noah, um, can you tell the listeners your strategy to help them find a customer success job? I'm really interested to know. For sure. It is a multi-stage process. This comes down to first the resume and the LinkedIn. It's got to be achievement oriented, right? Cover letter as well. Even though most recruiters will tell you they don't even look at a cover letter. From there, you need to be able to tell your stories, to interview well, not just with the recruiter, yeah. but the panel interview, the QBRs, the assignments, the culture fit. And working through that with clients is really the most fulfilling part. When they've been grinding for months, they get a few rejections, they're in the final round, they get super excited, they get down, you got to bring them back up. And then they, they'll call me crying, I got the job, I got the job. And sometimes I'm crying too which is, which is fine because it's just an amazing experience personally. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, it is a numbers game. I'll tell you why you apply to hundred roles. The response rate is probably about one or 2% as well. The reason why I don't believe in the networking approach, though it might work for, you know, Katrina, I'm super stoked that it did work. Oh, oh no. Can you hear us? That is if I get uh, a referral from Katrina, I jump into her company for the actual interview process. I have to beat out all other candidates. I have to impress for those five or six rounds. And if I spend all my time networking with Katrina, I've already missed so many opportunities to apply to other roles. Mm -hmm. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. I'm also not getting the practice in to interview. Think about how much stronger you would be 
you did 20, 30 interviews before maybe that networking came through. Yeah. So to me, that's my personal approach. Um, and that's how I view it. And that's where my clients have been successful. That's a really interesting approach, Noah, um, because it actually, I think it, it's a good opener for the first challenge of the day. This strategy, and it doesn't matter which strategy people will take to find their next role in customer success, or maybe to go one step higher in the ladder. The fact is that you need a lot of emotional intelligence and you need a lot of patience to an effort uh, for, for that to, to come. So it's not to go really quick on a uh, hop hill, hill, it's actually to go, to go slow but strong so you can reach with a lot of air up there and actually be able to celebrate. Oh my God, I love my analogies. But I hope the message was clear, people, because the first challenge of the day is overcoming the impatience of quick success. Many professionals transitioning into customer success, or maybe who are already there, expect rapid progress and success. And like I said, it's time and effort. It's a combination. How can they adjust their expectations to more realistic alignment with the typical timeline of professional growth in this, uh, in this field? Um, personally, I think that, uh, yes, you need to reset your expectations in this particular market, seeing as that it's so competitive and so mm -hmm. um, challenging. Uh, there, so you, you just need to be patient. And mm -hmm. um, one thing that I had previously mentioned on um, your podcast that I uh, thought was really, really helpful with this particular part of you know being patient is the accountability partner piece because having somebody you can talk to every week about your progress and what you're doing and what your next actions and goals are going to be it really made me engaged and it made me you know focus on the goals and also help and support the other person as well mm -hmm. it was very mutual so you know as Noah knows and, and experiences as well with his clients, it's the up and down. And, you know, you sometimes just the down, you just want to say, oh my God, I'm so, I, I just don't know if I can do this anymore and you're stressed or whatever. So having somebody to, you know, lift you up and say, you know what, but you have done X, Y, and Z and you're going to do X, Y, and Z, just be patient, that kind of thing. I personally found that to be um, a really nice reinforcement and um, lifted my spirits. I'm one of those um, professionals trying to find their next role in customer success. And indeed they're up and down. Sometimes it's like this burnout and having that person next to you say, yeah, okay. Yeah. Chill, relax. Let's see what, let's go through, let's go what, through what happened and let's learn from it. So it's like always there to virtually hug you. If nowadays now everything is virtual. Getting a job is difficult, but it's always been difficult. Yeah. Right. Like, as I mentioned, I was jobs for six months. As an enterprise CSM, I worked with Facebook, Procter & Gamble, Gary Vee, VaynerMedia. It still took me six months in 2021 to get a job. The average interview process lasts 58 days, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So that's a month and a half. And I think as well, just as Katrina mentioned, I was gonna build off of it, is when you have those ups and downs, especially that, you know, I've had people in their final rounds, they're like, hey, I can't talk to you right now. I need to just go curl up into a ball for a week and that's okay but you need somebody to say hey person x get back on the horse start applying again look how far you've come look where you were and i think just as katrina mentioned is like you need somebody to call and it's not necessarily your spouse or your friends you need somebody who's been there right and i didn't have anybody when i was there it was just myself my wife, she was pregnant, so she has her own, you know, own issues. She was uh, when I was job hunting. Um, I just had to get the work done. And so now a lot of people say, you know, after they get the job, they're like, hey, like, you brought my spirits up when I was super low. You helped come bring me up from the depths when I was really feeling down for myself. And I think having somebody to reach out to who's been there before is why um, I do what I do, because I didn't have that. Um, and when it comes to patience, it's just saying expectations. Hey, this is going to take a long time. I always tell people it's never going to be quick. Look, I have had people get jobs in two weeks. That is not the norm. That is not the norm. And I always say that it's not the norm. I've also had people that takes four months, three months. So I think setting the expectation, hey, this is going to be a three-month journey. 
It's gonna take time. And if you tell people that, you really set that expectation. I think that's what helps the patients because you know, if you said, hey, you gotta go train for a marathon for 42 kilometers or 20 miles, whatever it is, you know you can't do it the first week, probably not even the first month. Maybe take six months. But if you know it takes six months to work up to get there, you're okay with it. Nobody expects to run a marathon tomorrow without any training. As long as you have that expectation setting, I think that's super helpful. Yeah, definitely. I think it's about luck now. I think it's about um, being on the right time on the, in, in the right place, personally. What do you think about this, um, Katrina? Let's start with you. What do you think about actually luck in customer success when um, finding a role? I think luck is part of a lot of things for sure. Being somewhere at the mm -hmm. right time or the right place, meeting the right person and the right opportunity and everything's aligned, obviously. But I do think that you need to be proactive in creating that luck or, yep. you know, making yourself, um, you know, present in those particular situations so that that opportunity arises and also being open to it. And I think that we do have a lot of control over that and, uh, you know, it's not going to guarantee us anything. However, as long as we're, I think, still on that path and continuing to um, forge forward with what our goals are and work towards them and take steps to reach those goals, that, yeah, luck is in there, but we're also putting the hard work in too. And, you know, that that speaks for itself, I think. So what you're saying is to that people also can generate their luck. I think that, yeah, in a certain way, absolutely. You create the opportunities that um, can, um, you know, give you luck or, um, you know, if that's what you want to say, I don't think everything, I don't think it's a hundred percent luck, but you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sure. There's some yeah. luck involved. Super aligned with what Katrina said. Like, I believe there is luck transparently. Like there's many people who, who work hard. Some people got lucky, some people didn't. But I also think you make your own luck. Mm -hmm. And the harder you work, oftentimes the luckier you get. But let me tell you a story about luck. When I dropped on my PhD, yeah. I was looking for a job. I had no clue what I wanted to do. I was doing Uber Eats and I was super lost. A tech company in Toronto took a chance on me. I was lucky that they said, hey, you know what? I think this guy can do it. Started making, you know, 20,000 USD a year, which is not much, but it was a chance. And I got lucky enough that they believed me. So I do believe that luck does play a role, but I also believe as Katrina said, you have to put yourself out there. Like when I see people posting on LinkedIn to say, hey, I need a job. That's not gonna sway the, the votes in your favor. I just don't believe that. What will sway the votes is putting in the work. And the harder you work, the more lucky you typically get. When it comes to being patient, personality-wise is so important as well. How, and I think that personal branding will open the doors to more opportunities. It doesn't matter if you do it through network, podcasts, articles, how you call it, how you want. But how, what advice, or maybe Noah, have you had any client who their personality are more introvert and maybe it's difficult for them to actually go out there and, and versus someone that is extrovert, that it might be a little bit easier. Now I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong, but it's, it's different ways to see the world and tackle it as well. So no, ha, have you had that experience and how have you deal with those type of scenarios? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I'd say again, hundred percent of my clients do not network to get jobs, right? So they're not big into the posting or the DMing, things of that nature. It comes down to setting the expectations, as I mentioned before. Like you have to be patient in any job market, whether it's 2024, it's 2020, mm -hmm. it's 2010. There's always been layoffs. There's been layoffs for hundreds of years. It's just so much more prevalent now because people are on LinkedIn and they're posting about it. But it always happened. There was layoffs. Hundreds of thousands of people have been laid off every single year. So when you're on LinkedIn, it can be really frustrating and discouraging. When people are saying, I've applied to X number of jobs, I'm not hearing anything back, I got laid off. Mm -hmm. You don't really hear so much about all the positives. You don't see the flood of people who are getting hired. You don't see the flood of companies that are hiring. So I think because a lot more people are posting on LinkedIn, we're seeing a lot more layoffs 
visually. But there's always been layoffs. People have always been job seeking. It's happening for hundreds of years. But now you're in this echo chamber where it's doom and gloom. And you're not really hearing about people that are hiring. You're not really hearing about people that are getting jobs. And that's what I think is missing from people. So it's difficult. Sometimes it's really discouraging. And it's also about not only patience or quick success, but it's also about being motivated during that slow progress. And that's really, uh, it could be really complicated depending on, on the person. But I think that motiv being motivated, it's a, it's, it's, it's a partner with passion, the passion that you have for doing something. And, um, and I think that is related. So the second challenge of the day, it's a lot about staying motivated. And there are periods where progress seems really slow, or sometimes you talk to yourself and you say, there's no progress at all. Why? Why? And this can be a particularly a challenge for those new to customer success. Um, Katrina, could you share some personal strategies you have used to stay motivated and focused during those low um, phases? I know you mentioned the accountability partner, but is there maybe other personal um, strategy um, that, that you can share with us? Yeah, for, for me, it was recognizing when I was getting burned out and because I yeah. wasn't, wasn't being productive, I just, it wasn't helping me. And so I needed to step away from everything for, you know, it depends, like maybe it was just like a couple of weeks and just be quiet, kind of go inside and um, not be frustrated and understand that this is a journey and I just need to step away for a little bit and collect myself because I think it comes through whether it's conversations with people or your posts or whatever you're doing that people like you're just not there's a, people can, or you, you're not presenting yourself probably in the best light or the freshest way. If you, you know, are feeling a little burned out, maybe there's slight negativity in what you're doing or saying or yeah. frustration, and that doesn't really do you well or anybody for that matter. So yeah, I think being able to recognize when to step back and take a breath uh, makes a huge difference. Maybe, you know, concentrate on something that you, you didn't have time to do, or you weren't putting time into, for example, for me, I spent a lot of time, um, trying to, you know, learn German. So that was something I could fall back on. And, and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, that I like to do that was really helpful and, um, it's, it's accessible to me living in Berlin. So, something like that, something you find joy in, something you find pleasure in. And that gave me the energy and re-energized me to go back into the ring and, you know, figure out, okay, let's refresh now. Let's, let's keep moving. That's so true. So true. Noah, what strategy do you, do you apply when, when it comes to, to this, to being staying motivated in, in difficult times? I think it's having perspective, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think a lot of times we come out of the gate, want to go hundred percent and last for about five days. And when the people that I work with, I want you to go 70% yeah. for three months because you can keep 70% effort sustained across a long period of time. But when you try to go hundred percent, you're going to burn out. And I've had people that have burnt out. I think as well, what I tell a lot of my, my clients is you need to give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. You need to say, hey, what have I done these last few months? How many first round interviews have I got? How many second round have I got? What inputs am I doing? Because when you can actually see and document that, it's super powerful. Well, as you might already noticed, you will see that today's episode is not ending as we normally do. But that's because we had some technical issues at the end, and that's why I'm adding this audio. But I hope that the insights given by Noah and Katrina will help you stay motivated and with patience during that journey of looking for a customer success role. Remember, keep growing, keep learning, and let's keep improving the world of customer success. Until next time.